Hello guys and welcome to the first episode of the Los Blancos podcast. Today on the episode we are going to be doing Eden Hazard's future after some controversial news on Wednesday when we lost to Chelsea. We will preview the match against Sevilla and also we'll be doing a loan tracker where we'll be looking at all the loans and what we should do with them come next season. So... Let's get right to you after this short interval. So we're going to start with the loan trackers. Now, got seven loanies here. Martin Odegaard, Reynier, Bale, Kubo, Ceballos, Mayoral, Vallejo and Brahim Diaz. So we'll be looking at all of these loanies and how they've done this season. If, if they've done well and what should we do with it next season basically so we'll start with Martin Odegaard now Odegaard obviously came in five years ago with when we signed him from Strom Godset um, and after last season's Real Sociedad season where he, he did really well and he got so, some goals and assists on loan um, this season it's been more up and down for him he, at the start he had an injury and he wasn't really getting playing time for us, so we sent him out on loan to Arsenal, where we thought, you know, Arsenal need an attacking midfielder, they're going to need it. But obviously, Smith Rowe, Emil Smith Rowe came through that 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 period and he hasn't had the game time that he wanted, as well as having an injury during this period as well. So a big injury as well, I'd say a moderate injury. And his development's been so stunted by Emil Smith Rowe. I mean, Arsenal are obviously gonna prioritise Smith Rowe because he's the one he's their own he's their own homegrown player and he's gonna be there for years to come, so they're gonna obviously prioritise Emil Smith Rowe. But he just it's been up and down for him this season. He's had a few br- brilliant performances against Tottenham in the North London Derby and against Olympiacos, that comes to mind. But he's also had some some shockers against Liverpool and obviously against Villarreal. So, what should we do with him next year? It's it's a tough one because Odegaard is going to come back next year, and I'm not sure if Zidane can play him because Zidane is not going to really prioritize him over Valverde. Valverde has been excellent this season when he's played against Barcelona, Liverpool, all those games where he's played, he's been excellent. So, Martin Odegaard is realistically back up to that. So, there's two options here. Keep him next season, give him some development time in Spain, or or loan him out to another club in Spain. I think staying in Spain's best. I don't think getting him to a foreign club is the best thing right now. For him, I think getting some experience inside the Champions League, maybe give it, give it to Sevilla, if, it, if Sevilla won him. Maybe give him to Villarreal or the Sociedad, as Silver's get, David Silva's getting old. So, yeah, we've got that. But it's not as easy as that, is it? I mean, Arsenal have expressed an interest to keep him, keep him beyond the season on a permanent transfer. Whether we've squashed that, uh, we squashed that rumor with by co- calling him one of our untouchables, and therefore he's going to be staying on for quite for quite a few years. I mean, it's going to be a tough one, and next year's going to be key for Odegaard's development and his overall. I don't know overall. Overall talent is, he's going to have to do well next year, which. It's obvious, but 
you know, it's it's crucial at this point where if he, if he doesn't start getting double figures now, it's, it's never going to happen otherwise. So we need him to start getting some goals, getting some assists regularly. Consistency needs to build up again. Next, we have Renia, who's obviously on loan at uh, Borussia Dortmund, the 18-year-old. And it's not been a good season for him, as it? It's just been awful. He's had no game time under Edin Terzic or uh, or the Swiss guy before him, Lucien Favre. And um, it's just, he's not been able to get game time under before, like as a backup to Haaland because Haaland's just, he's a beast, he can't, he, you can't break him down. He's the, the only period where he's been significantly injured was uh, back end of December, start of January. And even that was only for like two, two three weeks. And then when he went out, Haaland, it, it, the the baton was given to Yusuf Mukoku. And it's the same story of Dortmund looking after their own. I don't I don't see a way for him to su- succeed at Dortmund anymore. I don't think extending this stay would would be good. I don't think any way. Because there is, unless Haaland leaves, then I don't think Drenia is going to get playing time for Dortmund anytime soon. Uh, there was rumours in the summer that he could go to Leverkusen, which I thought would have been very good, but now I don't think it would be possible with Florian Wirtz, Paulinho coming back, and all the other players in that Leverkusen side, although they will be getting a new manager soon, and therefore a new manager might want to do some different players, so you never know. Uh, but we have to get him out on loan via the lead. Have expressed an interest. Obviously, Ronaldo's R nine club. Um, yeah, I don't. It's it's a diff, it's again another tough one because it hasn't been the best season for him, and he's he's really it's been a frustrating season. Dortmund have been criticised. We've we've asked to recall him in January. Dortmund said they'll give him some playing time. They haven't, and he's been. Again, a emergency backup just in case Haaland and Mokoko are just getting getting on getting him on for like the last five minutes for for no reason, you know, right? Um so we need to get him out alone to a smaller club. I don't think Dortmund was ever gonna be a good idea. Getting him out to such a big club at such a young age, I don't think it was a good idea. So I think a smaller club like Hubo did last season, who we'll get on to soon. Like Kubo did last season, go to like a Mallorca. And speaking of Mallorca, they could be coming up next year, so he could be a good option for Mallorca or Espanyol, who will be coming up as well as via the lead. So yeah, Gareth Bell. Now Bell obviously started off the season very injured, and you know wasn't one of Mourinho's favourites, and he just didn't do well at all, did he? He wasn't getting game time. Mourinho said. He was unfit, he wouldn't answer questions about him. It wasn't going well for him. And then something happened, it clicked during February. And then he started scoring, banging in the goals. But then he, he, his form started to go down again. Then Mourinho was sacked uh, two weeks ago now. It's been two weeks since Mourinho's been sacked, right? Um, and Ryan Mason's obviously coming. And obviously Ryan Mason is ex-Tottenham player. And he's younger than Bale, so... He obviously respects Bale, and he's played him as a regular starter for Bale, and that's good for Bale, isn't it? He's getting minutes again now, and he's banging in the goals. Hat trick uh, last week against Sheffield United, very good hat trick, I might add. Uh, today, I think it is, or yesterday, yeah, they will be playing against. I can't remember who it was. I'm sure that'll come back to me, but uh, they will be playing against another team. Uh, Leeds, that was the team. Yeah, playing against Leeds, uh, he'll be key for that match, and we'll see how he's going. I mean, there's all this talk about Eden Hazard leaving, and there's been rumours on Twitter about, oh, who's better, Bale or Hazard, and ultimately that's not that's not really a question, has it? It's, it's, it's obviously Bale. Bale's obviously been a very, very good player for Real Madrid. It's just... Being his antics off the pitch, which really annoyed the Real Madrid fans. So, next season, 
I don't think he'll stay on. I think he'll either go back to Spurs on loan or permanent. Or we terminate his contract, which I think it's the only... Well, I don't... I think Zidane, between him and Zidane, it's gone. Unless Zidane goes and we bring in like Raul or uh, or Allegri or Joachim Le, then uh, I don't think it's it's going to be... There's going to be a future for him at Real Madrid. Uh, so next season, Bale has maintained an interest in going to Spurs or staying at Real Madrid. It's it's really confusing and it's always going to be the transfer starter saga, whether Bale's going to go or not. Um, but obviously, it's up to him, isn't it? It's up to him. It's not up to me. It's not up to the Florentino. It's not up to Zinedine. It's up to Gareth whether he wants to stay at Tottenham or whether he wants to stay at Real Madrid. Next, we have Dake Kubo, who's obviously started the season off at Villarreal, and he's going to end the season at Getafe, and it's just not been a good season for the lad, is it? The thing with Kubo is there's always going to be one future for him until we secure all of our players on work permits, on um, EU con- EU uh, passports, and that's, that's uh, loans. He's just going to keep going out on loan. Um, there's no other way to do it because if you didn't know, Japan have a weird rule where then their pl- people are not have allowed to have a dual nationality. So he's uh, he's either one or the other. That's 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 his choice, and I believe he's already won a cap with Japan. So I don't think he's allowed to change his allegiance to Spanish right now, even though he spent a few years at uh, La Masia. So. It's unlikely he's he's not going to stay next season, is he? It's it's he's been a poor season for the Japanese man, and next season it's going to be back on loan again. And you know I I've wrote a piece on Madrid Live about where Taco Kubo is going to go, and it's going it's either going to be like um, Milan uh, or Celtic. There was an option for him, Real Sociedad, who wanted to replace Martin Odegaard. So all these clubs wanted him, but. It, it wasn't really likely for that to happen. So Kubo's had a bad season, but I think he can he can he can bounce back. He's still young. He's twenty, and it's gonna happen for him. I I I still believe in his long term potential. Most most Madridistas do. You know, last season at Mallorca he was fantastic. I just need to relight that fire. Send him back to Mallorca maybe. Ceballos. Danny Ceballos, and I just don't know what's happened to Danny. He's just, he's not himself anymore, is he? He's just not himself. The kid that really lit up uh, Betis and Seville, Seville. Um, he's just gone, isn't it? It's 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 sad because at Betis, what he was allowed to do was he's, he was allowed to do what he wanted. He was allowed to dribble where he wanted. He was allowed to go where he wanted. He was a that's the freedom he does not have an Arsenal. Arsenal, the way Arsenal play, it's just not. It's not going to work for him, is it? It's not a way he's. And I believe that the old Danny Ceballos is gone. The Ceballos that would try tricks on the pitch against against experienced players. It's all gone. They're gone. It's done for Danny Ceballos. Um, he's completely changed as a footballer. He's more. He's playing with discipline. Which I just don't think it suits him. He's got a, he's quite thin, and he's just not. That's not what he's good at. He's, his build is perfect for just skipping around defenders. Iniesta, almost, almost like like a young Iniesta, and he's just, yeah, he's just not good enough. But next season, for Danny Ceballos, he's, he said he does not want to go back to Arsenal. That's fair enough. He's just not been given the game time this season. Granit Xhaka and Thomas Partey have obviously been. Prioritise over it, over him, um, and he wants to stay at Real Madrid. I don't think you see it happening with Zidane. Zidane just, you know, we might bring him in just to get the depth, but he was part of the list that were transfer listed. Um, so, as a part of trying to raise enough money to buy Mbappe, so we're probably going to try and sell him in the summer. Uh, Betis are definitely going to come in for him. He's a, he's a better boy through and through. So he's definitely going. I don't think it's a doubt there. 
it's, it's tough, isn't it? It's, it's, it's tough as a bias because he's he was always been a very good, very good player, technically gifted, one of the best, one of the most talented footballers in Spain. You know, I I, I rate him that much. I think if he fulfilled it potentially, he could have gone to like the levels of Modric. He, I thought he was that good. He's, those years wasted at Real Madrid where he just didn't get in game time and he, he just his growth was stunted. He got he, we got rid of him to Arsenal. He was okay last year. Back end was very good, but it was okay. He, start, he stayed at Arsenal this season. He's been poor, and that performance against uh, Villarreal was typical of him this season, where he was just getting run by Juan Foyth, a natural centre back, not a right back. He was just getting run past, and eventually just gave up the red card. I mean. It's it's not looking good for Danny Ceballos, is it? And it's not looking good for Real Madrid. Next up, we have Borja Mayoral, and I think Borja Mayoral is just is there's only one outcome for him. I think that's staying at Roma. He's been good this season for Roma. He's you know he's he's not been terrible. He's been back up to Edin Dzeko as normal, and he's been good. He's he's provided competition. He's scored some goals. He's He's been okay for Roma, and um, Paolo Fonseca is obviously leaving this season, and Jose Mourinho is coming in, uh, so we can see if Jose can lift the best out of it in uh, in Borja. Um, but I think it's it, it's up for him. Round Madrid, he's been uh, the opinion of most Real Madrid fans, he's been robbing a living. I think he has to be gone now. It's 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 it's. Uh, it's just gonna happen, isn't it? Twenty million, I think, it is the if Roma exercise the buyout clause in his contract. If they go for it, one more loan season, then they'll have to pay twenty five million. So they're gonna go for it this season, I think. Um, but if he comes back, I wouldn't be too sad. But I just wouldn't be delighted either. He's just he's been okay. He's been good. He's been solid for Roma, and yeah, I hope he does well under. Jose Mourinho next season. Next we have Jesus Vallejo, and Vallejo is just there's. He's just ne- he's 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 just never, never proven, and I just don't get why we still have him on our books. He's just never shown us why he's he he even deserves a contract around Madrid. He's never shown that. He's never shown any potential. And that's the thing, I just don't get why he's still here at this point. Granada probably gonna make the offer. I'm not I'm not too keen. I mean, most round fans want him out. I don't I don't think they've got an agenda against him. I just don't think they don't really they don't really care about Vallejo and the, I agree with them. That what's the point of having Vallejo around? It's just it just doesn't help us in any way. It's, his wage isn't that big, so it's not like he affects us in any way, but I'm sure he's just he's just not very good, is he? He's just not very good and Granada is his level at the point and he's it's mid table. That's his level, he's just not strong enough, he's he's not physical enough. Have you seen that the the boy is just not he's not he's just not uh, bulking up enough. He's not bulked up enough, so he's gotta go this summer I think for uh, to um Granada. Uh for Five to ten million is. I can't remember how much. I don't think we we paid anything. I don't think. I think he is a rounded product. So yeah. Next we have Brahim Diaz, and you know at the start of the season this was the player I was most excited about because Brahim. I, I'm a big fan of Brahim. I think he's a fantastic footballer. And it started off incredibly well. He was absolutely fantastic, fantastic. But second half the season injuries and he's just inconsistency and he's just not being able to find himself back on the uh, starting 11. Chalinoglu's found himself ahead of him most of the time and he's just been the second half has been so disappointing for for him but I still believe in his long-term potential. Brahim Diaz is a fantastic player we, we paid 20 million for him from Ante. I'm not ready to give up on him yet, just yet, and, and I'm sure most Madrid fans aren't either. Brahim Diaz, he's still got it. I know he has. I know he has, still got it to give it. Give it one more season. We need to get get him to a club that will appreciate him, not a club like Villarreal where he, where he won't get game time, but 
mid table club granada maybe uh maybe well, who else you could go for yeah, espanol if they come back so yeah i think next season could he stay on it it's 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 a it's a long shot I would say that it's a long shot that he would stay off with us next season, but you know it's not impossible if he does stay with us. And I wouldn't be too mad if he does stay with us, but I just want to see him getting game time and I want to see him developing because I really do love him. He's fantastic at football, fantastic. So that is the end of the loan tracker. We'll be back with you in a short time, period of time when we get the interval. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. So, tomorrow or today, whenever you, whenever I decide to upload this, on Sunday the 9th, I believe it is, Sunday the 9th of my, May, oh my god, we, Real Madrid, are playing against Sevilla and it's going to be a big match. It's, it's probably the biggest match of our seasons right now. Um, and it's the biggest match left in our f schedule. I mean, it's just going to be big, isn't it? I mean, I'm nervous for this. I, I, I definitely am. It's, it decides our season, ultimately, if we win or lose against Sevilla. Um, if we lose, I don't. I think it's title over, title race over. If you win, if we win, then it's, it's, it's going to be one hell of a ride. Um, obviously we play this after the Atletico versus Barcelona match and you will probably know the verdict when you're watching this and you'll probably know what happened in that match. Hopefully it was a draw. I'll take a draw. I'll very happily take a draw. I'll take a Barcelona win as well. That's the first time I've ever said that, isn't it? I'll take a Barcelona win. God, what have I become? But ultimately I just don't want Atletico to win. But that's not my priority, that's Barcelona trying to screw them th themselves over. So, what will happen? In this Sevilla game, it's, it's packed full of storylines, isn't it? Of where, can, where can you start? I mean, the obvious one is, is Julian Lobotegui coming to ruin his old sides. <sighs> La Liga opportunities, I mean, if we don't win La Liga, it's, it's, I, I can't count it as a successful season because it's been an awful season. Ultimately, we, we've been knocked out by Athletic Bilbao in the Super Cup, but we'll be, we've been um, knocked out by the knocked out in the Copa del Rey by a bunch of Spanish plumbers in Old Cayano. Disrespect. I have to say that, even though because because they beat us, but 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 this is our only chance of getting making this a successful season this La Liga you know it's 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 the only thing we have and um, uh, so it's it's a it's a it's a big game that's I don't, I don't, well, that's obvious but we've got loads of injuries as normal and Sevilla don't Sevilla are I think fully fresh I think they've got every single player available for this match which is not great I'm gonna say what the what I think the lineup should be. So obviously Ramos, Varane, Vasquez. Uh, who else? We got Ramos, Varane, Vasquez. Um, Valverde is a doubt for this match. Uh, obviously Carvajal is gonna miss it as well. Um, we've also got. I think that's it. Hazard's a doubt as well. Uh, but I don't really want him to play. As I mentioned, Vinicius is a doubt as well, which I was surprised about. I don't think he's the only player we we did not have an injury yet. Mendy should be expected to return for this match. Um, yeah, that's about it. So goalkeeper Tibo. Tibo, I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think there should be any question about that. That's 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 always going to be the case, isn't it? Tibo is a fantastic goalkeeper, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world. Yep, I'll throw an out there. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. What are you going to do about it? Right back. Uh, Alvaro Riazola. Yeah, uh, I mean, it just... 
he should not be anywhere near a match of this magnitude, but I thought oh, he's, he's gonna be there. I personally like him. He's just he's just he's just not being good for Real Madrid, has he? So he's gonna be back, but he is our lucky charm, and he won six trophies last year. Did he? No, he won five. He won five trophies last year. So you know he could be very good. No, I'm not expecting much from Alvaro. To, uh, to be honest, I don't think he's that good to be. But hopefully. He provides us with a masterclass. Next we have, oh dear, two centre-backs, Nacho, Militao. I don't think there's any problem with that. I, I, I personally like them both and uh, Militao has proven himself to be a fantastic centre-back um, in, the, in these last few weeks. Uh, Nacho is obviously, I love him, I love Nacho. So both types of Nachos, I like the crisp and the, and the player. Um, but Nacho, he's a fantastic squad rotation player, and, he's, and I think he is genuinely a fantastic footballer. He's just never had a consistent run in in, in the team. Um, left back Mendy should be fairly obvious. CDM Casemiro, and this is the only position in the in the pitch where we can have actually some some fight for a position, and it's uh, Antonio Blanco who's been fantastic the last few weeks um but i think it's fine um valverde you can play today i think that's fairly obvious valverde and Tony cruz will probably play and will up front we'll have a front three of benzema we'll have a front a and two strider two wingers alongside him called asensio and vinicius vinicius did really well in the reverse fixture and he was our man of the match in the reverse fixture. I think that was his first good performance of the season. Where he forced a mistake from Bono. And he he scored the goal, obviously. So, yeah, I don't... I'm not sure. I think it's going to be a tough game for us. It's going obviously going to be a tough game. But we're going to have to come through. We're going to have to come through that round with mentality. Hasta el final. Uh, we're going to have to do this. Vamos. Vamos. So that's the end of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be coming through next week. Next week, the new podcast. I think I'll try to make it next week anyway. We'll look at some of the topics that would come up in the next week by next week. So that's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Bye.